Hello, my filthy little sinners, and welcome to Sucker for Love, Date to Die For, a game about dating eldritch horrors beyond human comprehension. Luckily, I'm not human, so I don't really think I'm gonna have to worry about the whole comprehension thing. Uh, I comprehend these titties, and they are amazing. Uh, this game is a sequel to the sucker, uh, the first Sucker for Love, um, and we're going to play the demo for the next one that I'm super excited to play. Uh, there's winding storylines, there's voiced characters, which I always love to see in visual novels because I hate to read out loud, my voice hurts, and it makes for a super long video. But without further ado, let us date. The thousand versus the one. It has a super cute, like, old anime style to it. Makes it look like an anime episode. Eldritch gods, cosmic horrors, things beyond our understanding. To merely gaze upon their form is to abandon all hope. They are sequestered to the stars appearing only through challenging, failure-prone rituals and unutterable incantations. Their twisted, fanatical followers require no such invitation to commit horrors beyond belief in their stead. It is then when the boogeyman lurking in the shadows is not an obscure, imperceptible shade, but a tangible madman, that the vague prognostications of the stars become empty threats before the undeniably material. The simple hatchet in their hands. Did something scary happen? Oh, we're cute! Uh, huh? In the book you're reading, did something scary happen? You're as pale as a sheep. Oh, uh, no, no. I, uh, must have nodded off and had a bad dream. Oh. Um, I know this is a super weird question, but... Can you tell me where I am? You're in my bookstore, in Sacramento. Are you lost? Oh, no, I think I know where I am now. Thanks. I've been getting strange dreams lately. I can't make sense of what they've been about, but when I wake up, my heart is pounding out of my chest. I'm not where I fell asleep. These dreams started happening the same time that people began vanishing from my hometown. Sacramento. Even though it's a fairly remote town with a small population, there's been a dozen of disappearances in the last year alone. So many that the trains don't stop at the station anymore. Concerned locals claim to have spotted angry woodland spirits at the edge of the woods. Animals with too many features watching them. And outsiders can't shake the feeling that they've always been watched by the unblinking purple eyes of the townsfolk. The Sacramento Stare is what they call it on the news. They're saying the stare is how they can tell if you're an outsider at a glance. If you don't have it, they know you're not one of them. Oddly enough, I don't have the Sacramento Stare, despite being born here. And even now, after returning home, I've still been spared from it. Besides some lightheadedness and a dull, warm, fuzzies feeling, I don't feel any different. The girl that runs this odd bookstore also hasn't been cursed, it seems. Um, have you made a selection? Did you find a book to your liking? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to loiter. To be honest, I don't have any money with me, but I'll come back first thing tomorrow and buy something. No, no, it's fine. I'm glad that you enjoyed reading my books. But it's starting to get dark outside. With all the disappearances lately, you'd better hurry home. Home. Even though my family fled town when the disappearances began, I'm returning to our ancestral home in Sacramento, all because of a note that I found in my apartment this morning. Your mother is a little shook up from everything that happened, and so I'm taking care of her at Gram Gram Akande's place. If you came to visit, it would cheer her up and help her recovery. We've missed you so, so much, Stardust. But the strange thing is, my parents were two of the first people to go missing. 
They were declared dead since they've been missing more than a year and missed the disappearances. This is their handwriting, and my parents are the only ones that call me Stardust. This is them, beyond a shadow of a doubt. Whatever is going on here, I can't turn my back. I need to see them again. Speaking of, I'd better get going. Thanks for letting me doze off. I promise I'll come back real soon. Thank you for stopping in. Take care. Right. Time to hurry back. I pushed my way through the door, leaving a warm glow, leaving the warm glow of the bookstore behind as the sun sets. Sacramento, overgrown now by oppressive canopies of foliage from the smell of animal musk and swampy fields. You'd think this was a barn not a city street. Every surface here is plastered with posters. Many litter the ground, and every single one of them is someone that was never found. That's why they call it the Missing Person Lane. It's where desperate out-of-towners looking for their loved ones leave posters before going missing themselves. That's the only navigable footpath left, and the most direct route to my house. I can't tell if the darkness is playing tricks on me or what, but I'm losing my way down streets that I should know forwards and back. Wasn't I supposed to make a turn a while ago? I can't make heads or tails of the houses and landmarks I used as a kid to get around. It's like my whole hometown has been replaced by an unfamiliar yet exact replica. Okay. Calm down. If I check the note my parents wrote and compare the address number to the nearest house, I should be able to at least figure out if I'm walking the right way. A blank grocery store receipt? When did I put this in my pocket? Where's my parents' letter? I dig through my pockets in a panic. There's no way I dropped it in the bookstore, so where could it have this receipt? It has the same fold lines and dimensions as the handwritten note I had. Could I have... No, there's no way I could have misread a shopping list as an entire letter from my parents. I fumbled around with the note, checking the back and flipping it and turning it in a hopeless attempt to see the message again, but the receipt... receipt stays a receipt. Something is very wrong. I turned to run. Hey! Ow! Uh, are you, like, blind or something? Watch where you're going, Klutzerama! I slammed right into somebody coming the other way. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you alright? I should have been more careful. Well, she's really pretty, but what on earth is this girl doing wandering around Sacramento at night? I don't! Sorry, I didn't mean to smack into you like that. I know it's not an excuse, but I was just in a rush. Oh yeah, I know. You gotta go run off and steal my boyfriend, right? Yeah, it's whatever. Totally cool. What? Save your breath. I already know how this goes. Uh, your boyfriend? Yeah, you heard me. My boyfriend. Buck is mine. Don't know what you're talking about? Who the heck is Buck? Where the hell are all these accusations coming from? Um, I don't know anyone named Buck. Huh? <laughs> really? Don't know who Buck is? You're not like from out of town. The stare. It's real. I turned my head down and briskly walked past her. She starts walking alongside hey, me. Hey, look at me. I can't let her see my eyes, no matter what. She'll notice I don't have the Sacramento stare. You can tell me. <laughs> Are you from here, or what? I live here. Oh yeah? Look at me really quick. This is bad. Even if I make it home, she'll know... she'll know where I live. What do I do? Ah, I'm looking! I freeze. Before I know it, I'm already staring straight at her. <laughs> Bucky, hi! Got another one for you at Missing Person Lane. Oh, shit. I break into a mad dash, running my hardest. Everything is a blur. My heart pounding and my ears can't dull out the sounds of whistles, shouts, and undeniable commotion coming from all sides. Panting and dizzy, I feel my body slowing down, but the image of my face in the next missing person's poster kicks my legs into action once more. No matter how far I run, the buildings refuse to change, the street refuses to turn, and the sounds of the awakening woods refuse to obey it. This is hopeless. There's a wide open clearing and the trees about one block ahead. If I can break, break line of sight from the unseen p pursuers, I have a chance of finding some ways to hide. 
As I near the turnoff, my exhaustion makes itself known. If this is a dead end, or it's too dark to find my way, I won't have the energy to turn around and start running again. Around the corner. It's my grandma's house, sitting alone in the middle of a clearing in the woods. I thought the way to my house involved multiple turns a ways back, but I don't have time to question things as I'm already halfway up the makeshift dirt, makeshift dirt path. I skulk up the open lawn to my grandparents' old house, burst through the door, and hold the door shut for what feels like forever. No one's banging at the door for the moment. I'm not being chased. Hey, what? I may just be standing at the entrance, but I can already tell something feels off about my home. Like the warm, familiar place I grew up in is long gone. I can't put my finger on it, but... This dread. Why do I feel like I need to sneak around my own home? Is someone here? My parents? Hello? I'm home. No response. Hello? Oh, I need to get to my room. Oh, excellent. Oh, neat. They added more horror elements to it this time, huh? Oh, can I, I can't save. Okay, what is this? Our family photos, only none of these photos of me in it, and the faces of my siblings look unfamiliar. What's with those strange symbols? Uh, I'm gonna check over here. There's blood everywhere. Why is there blood everywhere? Hello? Oh! Oh! Oh my! That's hanging bodies. All right, coolio. Let's just go. All right. Messy as fuck in here. Ah, uh, what a mess. The closet's been ransacked, but no valuables have been taken. Looks like the triplets' toys have been mostly untouched ever since we left in a hurry. Okay, I went the wrong way. I don't like this. Oh no, someone had a grimace shake. What the fuck? There's purple shit everywhere. Upstairs. Let's check the bathroom. Nothing scary ever happens in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, you know, functioning toilet. There's a shower in here and also a giant plant, but you know, that's not a problem. Oh, and more purple shit. Let's go to- oh. Yep, that's a giant ass tree outside, all right, and a summoning circle. That's supposed to be my bedroom. What the heck happened to my room? All this occult stuff sitting around. Has someone been living here while I was away? These candles are lit. Whoever did this was here recently, but who? And why? Maybe there's some kind of clue in this book? There's no title or author or anything, and it smells like overripe fruit and formaldehyde. In other words, it reeks of death. My hands feel pruny and ice cold touching the cover, like it's drinking the life from my fingertips. Like the very material of this item is thirsty. Seeding the Black Woods. Instructions on how to corrupt the soil of a forest by using offal of a goat and the beating heart of a human. The beating what? I read and reread the passage, but it's plain as black and white. The beating heart of a human. I reread again and again, my disbelief washing away more and more each time. This isn't a joke. First the stare that only the locals have, then the disappearances, then the supernaturally overgrown woods, and now this book describing sacrificial rituals? The truth dawns on me. Sacramento has been overrun by cultists. People haven't been spirited away by angry forest spirits, they've been abducted. And I'm next. Can't stop trembling, should I hide? Is there even anywhere to hide? 
I certainly can't run. These cultists could be anywhere. I hastily flip through the book. Maybe there's something, anything that I can use to escape. I miss hundreds of pages of indecipherable runes and obscene rituals. One catches my attention. Manifest the All-Mother. According to this, the All-Mother is supposed to be a benign eldritch entity with profane powers of life preservation. Nothing else in this book looked even remotely benign. If this book is for real, then this All-Mother is my best shot at getting out of here alive. Summoning a space demon is probably a bad idea, but my odds couldn't get any worse than they already are. They haven't found a single person that went missing. Besides, there's still a chance that this book is fake, right? That there's an explanation for all the weirdness happening in Sacramento? I'd better hurry and do the ritual and find out. Looks like I already have everything I need to try. Uh, this entity is... However, no contact with Eldritch Gods is ever completely safe. Okay, douse any lit candles. Okay, uh, ensure that the idol of the black goat is present somewhere in the room. Looks like an idol of a goat. Okay, have a plant m uh, mister with you. Got a plant mister. Okay, this feature is primarily in Oh fuck, I accidentally clicked. Okay. While facing the tree of the Black Woods, chant her name. Okay, I'm assuming that's the tree of the Black Woods. Oh wait, hold on. Do -do -do. Radzatzan Selva Obscura. Insolent human! You dare call upon Roxanne? The All Mother of the Black Woods? Yes. It worked! This book is for real? How did they get their hands on something like this? Titty. Mommy. Goat mommy. Goat mommy. Titty. There's several mouths in her hair. I don't care. I love Bayonetta. Anyway, I love you. The form of the black goat of the woods assails my senses, the birthplace of life and the final resting place of death. The maker and the unmaker. And all her undulating horror. Undulating? Mmm. -hmm. I like the sound of that. Vile Selene ooze it seeps from the pores of my clenched fists, and I'm overcome by an overworldly nausea beyond reckon reckoning. I have tolerated mortal stench upon my soil long enough. Today is the end of empty threats. All that you are, all you ever have been, shall now become mere fertilizer for my black woods. The blood trapped within my distended veins quickly uh, quickened, surging agitatedly beneath the flesh of my cheeks. Your life blood shall soak the earth, nurturing my young as they spring forth from the wicked soil to feed upon your ever-suffering remains for all of time. In my hands, you will die again and again and again. Why are you blushing? Why are you blushing? Um... G girl pretty. Oh my god! <laughs> I thought I was driving you insane! All that sweating and hyperventilating! You look like you were gonna throw up! Oh, that just happens whenever I talk to girls sometimes. What? My foolish mortal! Impudent has made me very, very. Oh, forget it. Is it this time? Torture again? Where did you catch your cult mate with someone else and now you want me to pretend to be your mommy to comfort you? Oh, you can be my mommy, alright. <laughs> you can be my mommy all you want. <laughs> cult mate torture? I think I've been confused with someone else again. Out with it. You probably only have a few more moments before your lust breaks your will. So make it quick. Uh, I feel fine. I mean, she's dropped dead gorgeous, and I feel like my heart is beating out of my chest, but I don't feel like my will is breaking or anything. <laughs> I am the goddess of fertility, the physical manifestation of perverse desires. And you are standing two feet away from me, at the very epicenter of my carnal influence. And you're telling me you don't feel a thing. I mean, horny. I mean, that's what we're all thinking, right? I mean, I think you're really beautiful. And that's all? You think I'm just... Pity. 
Come closer and take a deep breath in. <laughs> Spray bottle. This is a real low point. Goddess of Lust getting rejected by her own cultist in her own dream. Um, I don't know if this makes it worse or not, but I'm actually not anybody's cultist. What did you say? I mean, sorry, I summoned you because my life is in danger and I thought maybe you'd be able to help me somehow. Suddenly she lifts my chin and pulls my face closer. Ah, ma <laughs> mommy. Lies. You, you're not under my influence. You're not one of them. How did you get this book? What do you mean? I just found it on the floor. Listen to me. You are in grave, grave danger. The Thousand doesn't know you're here yet, but they will be coming for you. You've got nowhere to run. You won't be able to escape. Not while I'm still rooted here. Any road you walk will lead straight back here. You need to do the rituals in that book in order. Ending with a spell that will uproot me from this location. Once I've been uprooted, you'll be able to run for it and hope for the best. Don't let anything happen to the book. If you lose it before I'm uprooted, you'll have no way out. A chill is running up my spine. Run for it. No way out. Grave danger. Just what have I gotten myself into? Am I scaring you? I know it's a lot, but you have no choice if we're ever going to escape from Sacramento. Wait a minute, did I just hear something right? Hold on, it sounds like you're trying to escape too. Things have gotten messy with my cultists. Messy in a bad way, I mean. My followers have turned against me uh. and are abusing me and my woods' power to kill outsiders indiscriminately. Oh. This is a nightmare that I'd just like to end. Neither of us can leave without the uprooting ritual being performed, but I should warn you. These incantations and rituals can be terrifying for a non-cultist to perform. Even successfully completing them can have grave consequences. These rituals will test your mettle in ways that you're just okay with what I'm saying. I am. If there's a way out of this, just tell me how and I'll do it. Are you sure? So many people have gone missing in Sacramento. I'm not letting the same thing happen to either of us. Not today. Let's not waste any time. Start with the spawn partner ritual first. Oh, okay. Spawn partner. Du -du 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 -du. Spawn partner. Light the ritual candles. The flame, the color of the flame does not matter. So just find a color that's comforting. I like black. All right. Um, have your choice of an aromatic herb on your person. I'll take the lavender. Imagine your ideal partner. If it exists, it will appear before you. If it does not exist, it will be created. Uh, do not imagine something you can't put back, okay? So, these followers are kind of like jealous ex-boyfriends, then. You want nothing to do with them, but they won't let you leave. Actually, yes, that's precisely right. They're like my exes. And using the same metaphor, if you try to date me, then my exes will hack you to death with farm tools. I guess that last part wasn't a metaphor. Maybe I should get back to the rituals That's then? probably a good idea. Okay, how do I imagine my ideal partner, I guess? I don't know. Let's just do the ritual. Ah. Wait, I can explain. Go ahead. I've got nothing. <laughs> There's no need to be bashful, especially after all that time you spent playing coy. In view of the circumstances, perhaps I will allow you to be my partner. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Really? And that's okay with you, even though we just, uh... Well, it's sudden, and it'll be a long, long time before I could ever trust a human again. But I'm not exactly the god of taking things slow. Mommy. Besides, I already have a thousand children. <laughs> There's no harm in a thousand and one. Oh shit, okay. Um, are we gonna like um make a baby or something? I I I didn't come prepared for this. Wait, what are we talking about? Taking me as your partner? I thought you were talking about just being my girlfriend. <laughs> The two definitions of partners that a fertility goddess was referring to the platonic meaning? There's three meanings of partners. What's the third? Cowboys. Are you still joking around while standing so close? You should be melting with desire. Being anywhere within a mile of me should amplify your lust a thousandfold. Oh, that's an easy one. A thousand times zero is zero. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yeah. So, I take it you haven't had children yet? Nope. 
And you aren't with child now? You're going to die here. And there's nothing I can do to help. What? You're not really good. You're really not going to help me just because I don't have kids? Not that I won't. And I can't. I am an entity of untapped cosmic potential. And I want a big family. The biggest family possible. I want every living thing on Earth to be a direct descendant of me or those that best serve that goal. Receive a fraction of my power. Ah. My most devoted followers are bestowed with gifts like extended lifespans. Rapid healing, physical enhancement, and in some cases, immortality. And those followers are the ones looking for you. Ah. You, on the other hand, have closed yourself off to my dark influence and are mortal and vulnerable. What if I don't want powers or kids? What if I drained the life from your body and then used it to fertilize my wicked soil until something that will give me grandchildren comes crawling out? Um... I take an involuntary step backwards. Oh, you didn't deserve that. Uh, yeah. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Let's move on to the next ritual so we can get out of here, okay? Mm. Holy moly, that was freaking scary. He's really taking this hard. I'd better go get the stuff for the next ritual. Um, meat from a living thing that died. Okay, check the meat rack in the dining room. Milk of the black goat. Store bought 2% is apparently fine too. It's in the fridge. Uh, a receptacle filled to the brim with liquid life. They mean blood. Please use blood from now on. <laughs> so and then in the margins. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to make the flames, and then I need to go get the stuff. Alright, downstairs we go, ho ho. The Tommy room. The Tommy room. I went the wrong way. This way. Back outside. Yes. This way. This way. I don't like the way that that loaded. Tommy room to Tommy room to Tommy room. Tatami room. I think that's where I'm gonna go, is the tatami room. Alright, time to get some meat. Smells kind of strange, this is beef, pork, whatever it came from, it was huge. It's probably a human. I should probably move on before I count the number of legs hanging on hooks. Um... This way. Bum, bum, bum. Usually pungent spices. Okay, the air is... Okay, cool. What is this? Cooking oil. Milk of a black goat. Uh, it just looks like a regular carton of strawberry milk. Uh, but I guess that works. I guess the cultists would have had a hard time getting a real thing from uh, Roxon now that their relationship is soured. No pun intended. This should be good enough. Oh yeah, I need... Uh, I need blood too. Oh yeah, this'll work. Uh, blood! An unsettling amount of it. That's what the ritual calls for? A chill just ran up my spine. Am I being watched? I have everything I need. I need to get out of here fast. Hey, okay, this way. I went too far. Hey mommy! I'm back! Okay... Do do A horrigor Ya Oh, well done. Looks like you did everything perfectly. Did I just make you a dinner? Nothing to it. If all the rituals are this easy, we just might be able to get out of here. I don't want to leave things as they are between us. Your life is your own. I'm sorry for losing my composure. Oh, yeah, no problem. That's it. I nearly forgot about that already. I'm a little surprised little literal god would bother apologizing to a human at all. I've given it some thought, and while you may be blasphemously abstinent, you're the only person in the world that can help me. You see, if you step within range of my woods, any desire you have that will lead you closer to me is amplified to such an intense degree that it's unbearable, and most of the time, it's lust. Anyone who is led here seeking carnal or animalistic pleasures develops the sacramento stare and becomes a cultist. If you are brought into my woods for any other reason, you don't become one of my chosen thous, and your desire will make you futilely search the woods for what isn't there. Forget to eat and sleep, and you'll search and search until you die of exhaustion and become fertilizer for the woods to grow further. You're the only person to reach me without joining the cult or dropping dead. Thanks in no small part to the fact that you don't have lust to amplify. My only question is, if you're not here for lust, why are you here? Uh, I pulled the receipt out of my pocket. Came here looking for my parents. This used to be a handwritten letter from them saying that they were here in this house, but once I got here, it turned into a blank receipt and won't turn back. 
The woods have indeed toyed with your emotions to bring you here. That paper was likely never a letter from your parents, but the woods made you believe it was. I'm sorry. Oh, well that fucking sucks. Though they really aren't still alive. They were likely consumed by my woods no more than three days after they disappeared. I feel like I've been punched in the gut. The dust is long settled on my parents being gone, but the grief never faded. It'll give you your strength back. The woods won't let you feel how tired you are. I don't feel tired at all, but come to think of it, I feel, felt like I was going to collapse when I made it to the house. I don't think I've eaten since I got in the letter either. Take a few bites and the tears abate. There, there. It'll be all right, Stardust. Stardust? How did you know my parents' nickname for me? Anything that dies within my Blackwoods becomes a part of it. Their love for you likely lives on in me. Yes, that settles it. My parents really are gone. That's the only way that she could have known that name. That's outright terrifying, but I feel strangely comforted. That part of them is still here somehow. Um, I hope this isn't an offensive question, but how come the book said that you were benign? All the missing people and the people that came looking for them, uh, you ate them? It was never supposed to be like this. I came bearing gifts of safe childbirth for infant and mother, hungerlessness, disease immunity. But instead, my own worshippers tormented me until it broke my hearts. Aww. Now my woods are bloodthirsty, and I'm forced to watch innumerable die. Then I just need to, uh, bring your hearts back. But why? How could someone do something like that? How could somebody have so much hate in their heart? Because it's had an eternity to accumulate. What was that? It sounded like something breaking downstairs. Are they coming? No, 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 no! I forgot Roxon is just as scared as I am. I need to be more careful with showing fear for her sake. It could just be the house. The place is old and rotten in some places, so sometimes the house shifts on its own. I'll check it out. It sounded like it came from the kitchen. Well, oh. oh, that's the end of the demo. Oh, well, that was very pleasant and also a uh, hell of a cliffhanger. I definitely am looking forward to this game. I am definitely looking forward to this game. I really enjoyed the first one. I streamed the first one on Valentine's Day and I did the whole ass game, every single ending, um, which was a massive undertaking that took a long time. I think nine hours. It, it was a lot and that was last year. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited for this game. I really enjoyed the first one. Uh, my favorite is The King in Yellow, uh, which if you guys haven't played the first game, go ahead and do that. I'm going to put a link for both the first game, which also has a demo, and the second game's demo uh, in the description below. And uh, let, me t let me know how you like the game, if you're looking forward to it, and whether or not you would want me to stream it or make a video or make several videos, because I would play the whole entire game. I love this game series. Uh, down below. And I'll see you guys next time. I just had a hiccup. Anyway, bye-bye. Bye-bye.